Wait, no, you don't see as many um, of your wrinkles and your blue lines and your spots, and everybody's got get this really nice, warm um, appearance. Very nice. That's a nice intro, yeah. too. We, yeah. We're rolling live right here with a Ponder Gander at What Matters. We're, we're taking a Ponder Gander in perspective. This is my friend Circle Line, and that that's in the title line there somewhere. I've, I haven't done anything here since October. Um, felt like my voice had been gone, so I had to make it make it come along to a decision here to try to make these lungs work right. And Circle says, "Don't cough." <laughs> Don't cough. I'm telling you, whenever you feel the need to cough, breathe through it and just. Find mindfulness and find a spot and breathe through it and don't go with the coughing. You're irritating your lungs. You just want. <laughs> so it's uh, yes, it's a lot of fun quitting, testing, hmm? testing your perpetrude. Yeah. So you don't have cravings. Well, it, they kind of it's it's different now. It's like uh, you know it's gone through stages. First it was like real strong. But uh, you know, brief, and then it kind of yeah. kind of dimmed down and and reached just a little bit longer in length. And uh, now it's at the point where it's like um, it's a knowing that it's not uh, you know it's diminished so much, and that that what uh, that call of the craving is kind of like uh, you know it's uh, it's uh, it's a lie, right? It's not going to mm-hmm. give the satisfaction and that. Uh, so you just re- retraining the from the mind to the body, I guess. Yeah. So, so uh, do you think your um do do you think that it's your that your coughing is actually helping you? To well, I, I'm coughing less. I I would say probably than no, the other way around. Back. There's still coughs think? left inside. Yeah, it it helps because it there's stuff in your lungs that you want to expel. No, okay. but it doesn't. Okay, here's the thing. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Coughing does not help your lung. It just makes it generate more slime and all that, <laughs> slim and all that. And you make scratches on your lungs, so you don't want to do that. But I'm asking you, do you think that the coughing mm, uh, helps you to realize how nasty smoking really is? Yeah, definitely. So it becomes Dude. a bad Dude. memory to you it instead is. of something that's nice. Right, exactly, huh? And maybe that is helping you to not get the craving so much because then you start coughing and then you remember, oh, wait, it's doing this to me, so I don't want to smoke. Yeah, I smoked a long, long time, too. I I got some good practice, though, in 2017. I quit for a while back in Tennessee. So I I knew what to expect this time. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. It's not so bad, really. Yeah. It's, it's, uh... Just gotta realize that it's it's not. I don't know. No. Um. One thing that um, because it's an interesting study in how habits and programming works on humans, right? The whole smoking thing, uh, because it shows the great of the greatness of our way to make dissonance on things. You know how we cope with dissonance. Because I'm a smoker and I know it's bad. I'm not an idiot, right? So I know it's bad. I know what it does for me. I can understand that. And yet I still smoke, right? So in me, I have a dissonance. I have a way of coping with that dissonance. Where And, and that, that programming that I go to, it's nice. I'm going to do it to myself, even though I know it's bad. Um, that's interesting because that's a lot of programming. Do you cough? Like no, not, no, no. Hey, my levels look... Let's see how my levels look. Let's but see. I don't, as a general rule, I don't go with coughing. Because it's not, it's not healthy to cough. It's not doing good for you. Well, the Chinese say that uh, they they don't like a fan blowing on them. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know if they use candles or not, but it'd be like, maybe that's what oh, back to the candles. Yeah. <laughs> I oh. thought I'd work that back in there. <laughs> a candle in the wind. Yeah. That's uh. And we're looking into uh, into life today, you and I, and uh, a, a ponder gander in perspective. I thought that rolled out rather nice. Yes. Uh, uh, where I come from, uh, in my little part of the world, a big part of our culture is a thing called hygge. 
and it's you don't have a word for it the closest you get to it is cozy but here it's a really big thing how um, do you say it again hookah 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 and uh it, it's and hookah is uh that's candles and warm blankets and home woolen socks oh, nice. it's it's being together with the people you love, doing nothing but have a meal, or it's uh, having a nice cup of coffee with yourself that you spend time and effort making nice for you. It's it's things we do together. It's a mood. It's all those things that you do to make a comfortable spot or a moment in your day with people you like. You know, that's perfect. Would you do me a favor? Would you type that word and then uh, let me just grab that right now and then... When we close out the show, let me would you type that definition right there. I like that for uh, what this show is today. Uh, we have it. In, it comes in hookah, which is uh, um, perfect. The, it comes in hookah. Yeah. I love but it. But you also have you also have hookah lee. Uh, that's like um, um, a sweater that's really uh, warm and fuzzy. People will say, "Oh, that's that's a hookah lee sweater sweater you got there." Or, uh, uh, I had a hookily evening. So that's why uh, candles is not a chick thing here. It's, it's very, uh, um, I can't copy, common. I can't copy and paste out of uh, wire for some reason. Oh, where you want it? Uh, drop, it uh, drop it in the chat. I can't copy nor paste in there. Why is my, am I not over here? That ain't right now. Where are you? You're in the wrong spot. There we go. Thank you. Got it. That's two words, right? Yeah, because you you both use it as something you do and something that it was, right? I'm gonna have to or you, you meet you meet a, a co-worker you really like um, randomly and um, and you give them a warm hug. And say how are you, and then you'll end up with saying, "Oh wow, that that was a hugely uh, conversation." Thank Hugely. you. Hugely, right? it comes yeah. in hugely. I like that. Yeah, it comes in hugely. Yeah, but it's a it's a really big thing, um, part of um, the culture I'm from. So ah, that's ah. why can candles is not. Um, <coughs> that's something everybody does. I've got the uh, blog blog page here did not start it so I'm copying and pasting in there it comes in hugely really <laughs> so I've got what this is a circle lines perspectives it comes in hugely I say that word again hugely 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 it comes in hugely that's good but it's interesting because I think maybe you should just cough and cough and cough all that you can. <laughs> so that you, I'm going yeah, to. go for it. So that <laughs> you keep coughing forever and ever, so you won't smoke again. Because I think your coughing is programming you to uh, to understand that smoking is bad. Yeah, it is terrible bad. What a waste. Yeah. Too. yeah. I don't see. I'm not there, Vinny. Uh, huh? I'm programmed. I'm programmed where smoking is hugelit. Um, <laughs> exactly. See, I, I, w I had to uh, come to not to want to. I might yeah. like to, but yeah. I don't smoke Do a I lot really? when I'm alone. I nice. I smoke Thank more when I'm with people. Uh, thanks, uh, Google yeah. Trans gave it. Uh, but see, you don't really have. Uh, word for it so it yeah that's why I'm gonna ask for you to type all that that was a very nice yeah snuggles and blankets and stuff I, I think it's a very yeah. very descriptive good good word but what we're what we're doing right now is who could lead to me I'm having a nice conversation in a quiet moment with a person I really like yeah I love you <laughs> I love you too Winnie mm -hmm. So, but interesting, because I really think that um, your coughing is programming your body into uh, associating smoking with something bad. Yeah, but I always cough anyway. So. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. cough a lot. Then. Yeah. Stop coughing. Smoking then. weed. Really? I am. That's a lot of coughing. You should I mean. stop. If you, you ever stop. vape, well, don't ever do the bigger one of them things. 
I ain't crazy about that vaping business no now. But you can control coughing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can control farting too, but yeah, I. <laughs> well, who doesn't like farting? Come on. <laughs> I had beans and taters last night. What do you think I was doing in the middle of last night? <laughs> ah, there. You know, there's. There's that. Thing. So what do you do when you get a craving, Vinny? I just know that it ain't going to fix it, and I already realized that uh, it's already done for. So it doesn't give it do any good to give in because what's it going to fix? And then, do you yeah. go up and do something then, something completely different or something? I don't have any just to get of, away from it. No, I don't. I did what I did do is I didn't set any uh, exactitudes or rules. It, only that uh, that only that I would want to quit smoking and. So I do. I might sometimes think that I would like to have a cigarette, but now I've gone to the point where I know it was. It would be like, like my friend last night. Oh, come on! What you want a drag of this? I said, uh, really, honestly, it looks like that tastes like crap. Uh, and he was all like, had it pinched between his fingers and just sucking that last few drags down on it. You know, where it gets the little hot box to. Oh, burn, nasty, yeah. No, smoking? No, it's it's, it's becoming very, uh, like, a foreign thinking, in a way. But, you see, you can use you can use neuro-linguistic programming, which is what you're kind of doing, just not consciously, right? Uh, but you can use that NLP, neuro-linguistic programming, to stop smoking. Um, all the people I know who stopped smoking and had success with it, they, most of them, they read the book, uh, Finally Non-Smoker in, um, by, uh, Alan Carr. You heard about that? Uh-uh. No, but the trick is, it's a whole book that's just gonna program you into smoking is really horrible. It stinks, it, it, it harms you, it harms people around you, it harms <clears throat> the planet in the way that people are now growing tobacco instead of food. Um, I All that it just it just um, it goes to this over and over and repeats it and repeats it and the trick is as long as you're reading the book from you started to the finish you have That's to so smoke. Good. Yeah, but then you have to smoke. You can't stop smoking until you end reach the end of the book. So what it does it while you are being programmed with how horrible smoking it is it forces you to smoke at the same time. And uh. And then you generate a body memory of, I don't want to do this. I have to smoke, but I don't want to. It's making me sick. I don't want to do it. And once you go through that phase for long enough that it takes you to read the book, and then you can finally quit smoking. The people say that who did this, that it feels like they are finally reaching that moment where I get to stop smoking. Yeah, I, I think I've uh, got way past that, uh, wherever it would be, that halfway point or whatever. It's like well into the uh, uh, having it behind. It's it's uh, less of an issue. I, I'll tell you, like last night, woke up uh, like I do through the night and uh, got me a big old drink of water. And used to, it'd be like I would be ready for a smoke. And I noticed last night, it was like, huh, that's cool. So it's mm -hmm. what I've been looking at is that craving and trying to reestablish what it is and understand it's like an itch, you know, like from healing. Uh, it's the same thing. So realizing that it is not a satisfaction to tear the scab off, right, in a sense, you know, then you have to have more healing come about. Uh, you keep tearing the scab off. So just realize it's, it's healing and uh, reinterpret that, uh, that signal that it's sending the craving. And then realize that it's not, uh, it, it's a conditioned response. It's like it, that, that addiction says, Hey, remember? Uh, hey, remember? It's like this. This gets uh, less, less louder, but it might go yeah. and like remember, 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 remember. It doesn't mm -hmm. stop. But, uh, it it just changes because it's going to call differently. And then finally, after you stop responding to as many calls as it can think to get you to come have a cigarette, and you re responding in your mind by realizing it's just uh, it's not. It's not something that your body's really calling for. No. Yeah. 
and uh, and I I haven't I I I haven't had the nerves to read that Ellen Carr book. I don't want to quit smoking right now. See that? So I haven't read it. I haven't me. read it. Yeah, that's the same way. But I didn't want to. Quit yeah, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for it. Uh, maybe one day I will be, and then I will do the Alan Carr book. Or um, a Dane made another version of it that's not as tough and boot camp like, but it's sort of the same. Uh, he didn't write a book because it's way too simple. Um, what you do is that you tell yourself, "I can smoke as many cigarettes as I want to," and you allow to smoke cigarettes. But whenever you are smoking a cigarette, you have to stand all alone outside, uh, find somewhere where it's freezing and windy cold or something and you have to stare into a corner or um, a wall and you can't think about anything else than here I'm standing all alone smoking a cigarette um, and that's what you have to do every time you smoke but you can smoke as much as you want and most of the people who did this that I've heard of they quit smoking or they went down to one or two cigarettes a day because it was really boring and inconvenient and you have to be out there and you have to be all alone and you have to control your thoughts back to the smoke, back to the smoke. So it it gets boring, right? Yeah. And that's another way of using NLP to program how, uh, what you associate with pleasure and which uh, stuff gives you serotonin and endorphins and all those things. It's over here at the uh, the broadcaster page. There's a I got a, a lot of edit to do over there. Mm. I am so like not uh, in practice of uh, writing anything over there. No. For a couple of months, I'd taken away. Mm. You haven't done any writing for months. Two months. No, no, not huh? not not. No, I mean over there at the uh, the uh, broadcasting page. Not doing other writing in paper okay not for publication yeah uh, and communicate I mean that's a communication um, <coughs> and that this is what I need to bring to try uh, my friend just called from uh, that very good friend that uh, uh, from from Vegas during the Bundy trials he did he was, he was speaking before uh, before air here yeah and I was telling him about what's going on. See, so he, he didn't even understand still what uh, that the state had come back to appeal. He thought that was all over with in the Bundy Ranch case. So I, mm. I spoke with I spoke with I, I uh, communicated with uh, Maxine Bernstein and in uh, in private message and asked her what what to expect. And uh, so the uh, during the week of the 23rd to the 27th of March next year, the uh, the uh, U.S. Uh, Court of Appeals for the Ninth uh, Circuit and it will be in Las Vegas that week, and they'll be hearing the cases. Now, the state has appealed the dismissal with prejudice of the uh, Bundy et al. case. So, if the, uh, the the court will decide to uh, uphold the the uh, dismissal or to overturn it, and if they do, then the state would uh, have to file charges again. When they release that. Uh, information would be uh, who knows when. So, you know what I, I say about um, it, does he know that you have headphones on, Circle? Yeah, uh, I think maybe I had something running. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I was poking Flask because he, he gives you a no, hard no, no, time I when think, he <laughs> I think I had something running. I didn't think about that. Oh, uh, pardon me. Thank, I fixed it, Grimnir. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just poking around with these guys. <laughs> yes. See, uh, it, it was me, I think. Uh, uh, please don't shoot me, right? Uh, so anyways, yes, Maxine Bernstein, a big shout out to her because, you know, she did, doesn't have to take the time to communicate with me. And, and But on the other hand, see... There was many of us that went to to Vegas, and uh, we stood there as, and I'll use this generic term and call it citizen journalists, okay, uh, and and called to account these people. I did publicly. I mean, like in your face, hey mainstream, uh, I'm here to call you to the carpet. All right, hold your feet to the fire is the words I use. I'm still hearing that in the background. Mm. Bad yeah, audio playing, is a hate crime. <laughs> you were playing something in the background too, right? Me, no. Yeah. Not I. And okay, okay, sock puppet. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll get that book. I, I'm just not ready for it. 
right now. Really like my cigarettes. But anyway, so uh, again, that's a big shout out to Maxine Bernstein. She conversation. She gave she gave account when asked, and uh, I mean it's not like I would. I'm really hearing a lot of Eddie the echo in the background. Is it still going? It's 4:20 somewhere, so I'm going to take this moment and pause. And light I, I, it's this not up. me I may anymore. Talk. I, I think it's you. I don't know how it's me. I have the same problem okay. with Flash. Are you guys hearing an echo downstream? Grimner said he's still hearing it. See, uh, you know what? Let's hang up and maybe we ought to do a pause here and get Grimner to come in here. I'd like to fix this problem exactly. anyway. Shall we? Okay. Let me, uh, sure. let me come in here and pause this uh, recording. It is... Wait, and it's moved this birthday. Look, look, Vinny, you're not, you're not, re you're not coming through. You're not recording. Was not part of the recording. See, that's the deal, with yeah. Bopper. Good thing you didn't jump off. We'd be all like, "What? What happened? What happened? What happened?" Yeah, crazy duck people. All right. Well, um, hopefully, uh, hopefully um, you're good. I don't know. Am I back to the echo, 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 echo again, 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 again? Well, I'm not hearing it here, but they may be hearing it online. All right. Well, uh, thank you. Thank hey, you, Grimnia. There's, there's Donna over in, yeah. in the RLM one channel on Wire. Did, did you watch that video circle that I, that I posted up there for you? No. Val <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, okay, I'm going to find that. I'll post it into the chat here. It just came out today. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, Odin is uh, well, the, hallelujah. Odin is the, the god of Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Donna says, Big Papa scares the tech issues away. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you. Thank Thanks. you, Grimley. Yeah. Bye. Hey, what kind of uh, Freakers Friday would it be if we wasn't uh, getting... Uh, it's Moose's birthday. Yes, it is. Happy yep. birthday to you. <laughs> we can't sing it in the original tune because we might get copyrighted, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure my original tune is not the same as yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have no echoes, 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 Good. it seems, it seems. Good. It seems. So, so, are you going to go to the Bundy trial thing then? This yes and uh, yes, there's a lot that uh, I'm uh, having to enact to be able to do that. So mm. it's uh, a lot of things have to fall right in, and uh, maybe have some pushes and some prods and some uh, boosting behind to get her done. But, mm. uh, I want to uh, just be there and sit in and and listen for that week in the, uh, in the court of appeals. And sure. and when are, is this? It's March 23rd to the 27th. For oh, okay. Five days in Las Vegas, Nevada. Mm. Yes. Is that far? Uh, okay, far away is such a fun word. But in your mind, and I'm going to, you know, live in the American far away kind of sizes. Is it far away? It's like, you know, 1,500 miles away. That's far away. So far away. How long does it take to drive there? Well, I mean, uh, depends on how many times you stop. <laughs> if, you, if you're keeping that left door shut, it you know wouldn't take. Uh, you could do it in in a, a full day. Anyways, you know you could drive. Uh, you could drive uh, a thousand miles in say eighteen hours if you're keeping your uh, door closed. Okay. So. Okay. Okay, that's longer than the longest bus ride I've been on. Oh, forget about the bus. I think that's longer, right? Because I think the longest bus ride I've been on was from um, Denmark, Copenhagen to uh, Amsterdam. Yeah, I but I also I also did the bus from Denmark to to uh, Pau in. Um, 
I went from, you know, yeah, I rode the bus around the whole country. I started in Arkansas and went to Texas and Tennessee and then Spokane and down to Washington, and, uh, into Oregon and California and Vegas and up into mm -hmm. Colorado and <clears throat> back down and up into Utah and back down and over to California and back and then back to Texas and then back home. Mm -hmm. I remember Arkansas. both of those trips yeah. as fun. I don't remember them as being really boring or a hassle or annoying. I remember them as fun. Although the last time I went to uh, to Pau in uh, <laughs> we got really drunk on the bus, really drunk. Because I was traveling with these um, crazy Yugoslavians, right? Um, yeah, from Bosnia, and they were like. Um, Bosnians, real fun people, but they had these. Uh, they w they were uh, photographers, and they had they made movies and all that. And they they uh, they made this, they did this movie festival in uh, Mutovon in Yugoslavia. And they were really fun, and uh, we went to Prague for like five days or so in a bus, and we were so drunk once we got there. Huh. And for some reason, we picked the bus ride where they did a tour of uh, the Teresian Stadt um, um, Nazi camp, <laughs> labor camp, Nazi camp, death camp, call them what you want, um, <laughs> in um, uh, Teresian Stadt, which is the board right across the border to to um, to the Czech Republic, right? And they have this. You go on this tour, and we were so drunk. And it, is, that like on, a, is that like a public bus, like Greyhound in in America's here? Yeah. Oh yeah? yeah. And they don't they don't care if you get drunk. Not this one. Oh, yeah. No, because there is uh we had to take a ferry. Some of the wind we got really drunk on the ferry. It's a booze cruise. <laughs> no, not really. But <laughs> we, got, we got really drunk. Booze um, cruise ferry ride. <laughs> and the weird the the shit was because. Um, we had the Yugoslavians. So I was traveling with Yugoslavians and Danes, right? We were like 15 people going or so. Um, but because we had uh, the three of the Yugoslavians, they had Yugoslavian passports. Every border we crossed all the way down there, we had to get out and they did a full search and then oh, <laughs> all wow. that. Because, yeah, because the Danish passports, they just go through, right? We have you have the EU passport, but the Yugoslavians didn't. So <laughs> every time they went through, they had to get control, and they looked at all that. Um, I remember because I I had a, I was gonna bring a little you know, little bit of hashish for my trip, and once one of those Yugoslavians figured out that I had that, he was like, "We got to smoke it on the ferry. We got to smoke. You're not bringing that along because we're gonna get searched every fuck." border we're uh, going to cross. And I was like, no, we're not. And he was like, you're traveling with Yugoslavians. We're going to get such yeah. every border. I was like, okay, gotcha. So we had to smoke my entire stash <laughs> on the ferry because we're like, I'm not going to toss it, dude. He's like, no, we smoke it. Yeah. So we just smoked <laughs> and drank. And we were like, so Did once they ever made, search you? Uh, no, they searched the whole bus every time. Oh. Uh, you had to get out, and especially those three, they searched. Their, they were searched. They like, patted them down. What? Yeah, yeah and turned in, their pockets some of them inside out. Like, some of those borders took like fifteen or twenty minutes. Where they were checking their papers, seeing if they had the right visas. What were their? Uh, they were checking all the papers because the Yugoslavians. Yeah, so <laughs> not a part tell of them, the Hannah. EU. What's the yeah? What's the deal with Yugoslavians, <laughs> Hannah? Well, they're not a part of the EU, right? As long as you have an EU passport, you have open borders, sort of. So you just go through. So what would they do if their papers were not in order? Then they would not have gotten through the border. What, they just say, like, turn around? What about the yeah. country they were passing through? What would they do with them? They would probably say, turn around to where you can go, right? <laughs> go back the way you oh, come? Well, I do believe, I think, actually, that um, international... UN laws dictate that uh, the country that you get stuck in has to deal with you, but that doesn't really work because there are there are people uh, who are trapped in airports for years. Is that that's really true? Yeah, there's like a movie about it or something. Yeah. Really. Yeah. So what countries were you going to? You left Denmark. You uh, took a ferry uh, to where? Germany. Ferry over I have to no Germany. idea. I think I don't know what we crossed on there. Yeah, maybe Germany borders would check. Uh, maybe. I think we no, it doesn't because we went to more than those two borders. 
I suck at geography, man. You can look it up on the map, though, right? I'm, yeah, I'm fixing to. I'm going to uh, yeah. where I find my vine times at. Yeah. I'll go to the or maybe my sister time and table and then time into the, the, the Czech Republic. <laughs> All right. But then we entered that, t uh, what, finally in the morning we got there, right? You've been driving for, <laughs> I don't know how long, in that bus. And you get to the, um, the really serious, uh, Nazi death camp, labor camp thing after they should start, right? And we were drunk and high. And we, and outside, it's really fun because outside the, the, where you enter the gates, where it says Arbeit macht frei and all that. <laughs> uh, they have a little uh, shop where they sold uh, vodka bottles, small vodka and whiskey and all that, and, and small Coke cans. And then all this uh, souvenir from the death camp that you could bring along. So <laughs> we kind of just got extra drunk um, at the death camp. Really, I, that, I, I that's in Germany, huh? So I'm over here. Let me go back. I was in. You were doing the map. Yeah, and so so south of uh, Copenhagen is Germany, and there's. Yes. A, I wonder if I could make that big. I might need to go to a better map. Um, this is where I go find 420 <laughs> zones. <laughs> yeah, let me go do that. Denmark. Do y'all have like a a glorious flag or anything? <clears throat> One that you can plant. Glorious flag. Yeah, glorious flag. Well, you know, like you could plant somewhere, like on the moon or. Mars. Denmark has a flag. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure they would, right? Den Denmark oh. invented the flag, dude. Really? Oh, flag. All right. It's Here we go. This it fell from the heavens. Uh, so it you fell only from the heavens. Hey, we went man. to, uh, yeah, we went from, you, you know, we took the ferry from uh, Germany mm. to, to uh, from Denmark to Germany. Did you go to the Netherlands or Belgium? Yeah, I've been to the Netherlands, but that's, you know, that was a different trip. But then you go to Germany, and where is Czech? Oh, yeah, actually, you can go straight from Germany to uh, the Czech Republic. You go ah, to Leipzig yes, and yes. Dresden. Yeah, and uh, somehow here you should find the Theresian start. Yeah, well, that's the <laughs> Theresian start. That's the name of the um, Nazi uh, gas chamber, this camp. That oh, they went I see. Elsewhere. Strasbourg. Burr, yeah. Strasbourg. Yeah. Luxembourg. And down below Frankfurt. Mm hmm. It should be. Um, so we got these are all different names now that the uh, Slovenia and and Slovakia and the Czechia, all these. Yeah. Uh, this has all changed the maps here. Oh yeah, yeah, because they used to be more of one country, right? Yeah, and then they had to break up. What and then Bosnia and uh, that was in Serbia down there, Croatia. Those were some like real hard times. Of course, you go back in history, that was kind of like a little buffer there. Getting between the uh, yeah. the uh, uh, Turkey and uh, Europe, right there from Constantinople, and we had still have remnants of uh, Muslim and Christian uh, yeah. peoples in the region. So. Yeah, that's that's uh, Europe. You know, is small when you really think about it. Like. <laughs> Just look at how little itty bitty Denmark is, right? Yeah, and that's where I can uh, take a train. Yeah. I can take a train from one side, from Copenhagen up to the north Jutland of Denmark in six hours. Denmark is like the you say the 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 maker of the flag, the original, right? Yeah, they are the really the premier power to the what the Dutch East Indie Company, really that. Uh, well, Styles the the world that we live in under the corporate mm -hmm. uh, fascist uh, whatever kind of uh, tag you'd like to put on to the control well, of the government story, through corporation. The story of uh, the Danish flag is that we were losing the battle over in uh, Lithuania and Estonia. Um, um, we were losing a battle over there, and uh, um, they uh, prayed to the gods, and what the gods sent down, what gods sent down, was the flag. Uh, a red cloth with a white c 
cross across it, and that gave spirit to the Danish uh, warriors, and they won and fought. The, uh, they fought and won the battle, and the king brought home the the flag and you and made it the flag of the Danes. What it did do, Vinny, was that uh, we suddenly had colors to put on each other. So when we're out there in the battlefield, we can see who are our friends and who are our enemies. And we don't start slaughtering each other. Good idea, huh? Yeah, not a bad idea when you're losing a battle. Mm -hmm. To kind of, you know, get people together about something and make it visible and give them the colors so they can visibly see each other out. In I think that's what happened. But that's the story of the Danish flag. I'm over here looking at the uh, radio log, trying to how to put that in there somewhere. Right? Yeah. I got not smoking. It's a modest proposal. I'm carrying on this idea of a modest proposal. How about not smoking and and uh, the Danish flag? Mm. I like it. Not <laughs> not smoking in a Danish. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. This is all uh, subject to something. Yeah. It's not a Danish flag. How do, you, how do you spell Danish? It's not Danish, right? D-A-N. Um, do you get an extra N in there? What do you think? No, just D-A-N-I-S-H. Right. Well, I feel like that's kind of like a rip-off. Oh. To, the, to the Danes, yeah. The, it's such, done in such short amount of letters and <laughs> might, might lead one to think that you're talking about some feller named Dan. <laughs> yes. The Danish flag. Who was this man, Dan? Well, <laughs> he wasn't from Dane, the, the land of the Danes. This Dan, no. Yes. No, he well, was. Was. Yes. Did you have people named Dan in, in uh, Daneland? Oh, a lot. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. So it makes sense then. Yes. Yeah, he was probably the founder, the original guy that wandered over from across the icebergs or something. Maybe some stranded Viking. The um, the name Denmark or Denmark means the fields of the Danes. Yeah, Do, or uh, the fields of Dan. Of Dan, which is Dan. Of, of Dan. Dan. Yeah. The fields of Dan. Ah, it all makes sense now. The fields of Dan. And Grimnir, to answer your question, they sent it to the king. It fell from the heavens to the king, and from that he united his uh, his warriors under the flag and and gave them spirit. And and uh, and uh, heathen scum, Grimnir. Why would you prove it if if the gods gave it to you and if they gave it to the king? Then it must be true. See. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of, yeah. Well, that is, you know, um, I think there's one theory that, because uh, there was a Jewish family under the God Abraham, blah, blah, named Dan. And he, the um, one story is he traveled north and he is the one who founded the Danes. Who is that? Tell me again. Uh, <laughs> some Jewish guy <laughs> named Dan. Is that what you're saying or what they're saying? or? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it's that's not the official story in Denmark. No, it's not. No, no. Okay. So no. He went. No, the official the story in Denmark is that uh, um, that um, it, we come from people that walked and traveled from Africa all the way up to Europe and got um, longer and longer and wider and wider. Yeah, that's, a that's long the walk. official story, right? Uh huh. Yeah. But they you slowly know, migrated up to less. Uh, Less sun on uh, on the skin leads to less pigmentation, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Makes sense uh, to me. Yeah. How long can you, does it take? It take a long time to walk that far, I reckon. I know. Uh, Donna is writing in the our Olympic because she I she obviously knew the story about uh, the tribe of Dan. I see. I see. I see. There's a. Uh, Nano War Steel to Valhalla. Hmm? I bet that's like. Is that gonna be? I wonder if that is heavy metal. Is that a mustache? 
I can't make it out. It is a mustache, I think. Wow, that's huge. It's like it could have its own zip code. <laughs> no, I specified red meter. I said Jewish guy. <laughs> right? Some Jewish guy. Brother of Bob. A good thing Bob didn't walk north, though, right? Then we would beat Bob Mark. <laughs> that would just be ridiculous. What are you? Are you? I'm a bopper. <laughs> See? Oh, thank you. Thank you. It was Dan. <laughs> what, would you like to live in Bob Mark? No. Then we would need to have uh, our prime minister and new king as butt geek. I really hope you vote that guy in in America next time. Who? Butt geek. I don't know who that <laughs> I still is. Can't, I still can't say it without <laughs> giggling. <though. laughs> you have a politician named Peter Butt Geek, I think. He's a Democrat. He's running for the Democrats. I have no idea. Well, you need to vote for him, Vinny. I am not voting, though. Oh, please do, because we need the memes. Can you imagine the memes if you have President Butt Geek? That would be perfect. That would be perfect. The world would be complete. <laughs> oh, oh. They try to say that that's not how you say his name. But really, <laughs> you remember the bouquet lady from... <laughs> No, a no. bucket. <laughs> you don't what? remember the bouquet lady? From where? Oh, it's a British TV series, Keeping Up Appearances. Oh, I think and, I know her, that her name. Na yeah, her name is Bucket, right? <laughs> Highest in Bucket, but she pronounces it bouquet. <laughs> oh, yeah. You may have been. No. Maybe you shared a, a year or so b back. You shared some of that when I watched a little bit of it. Maybe that's where I know it from. Yeah, the... Um, British TV has always been kind of weird to me, mostly. Are you kidding me? You never saw Young Ones? I don't know. The most brilliant TV show ever made? I don't know. Give, I wonder if it's on YouTube. you got to see Young Ones, man. Do it. Let's see. Spell it. Do a <laughs> dot YT for YouTube and chat and see. Young Ones. Yeah. Young Ones. Can young Ones. <laughs> Let me try. I'll give you, some, I'll, I'll give you a link. Uh, Oh, that's a, that's a, wow, yeah, that'd be, um, <laughs> that'd be like, coming up on a <laughs> And you have to see the first episode first, because they, they fit, it's a sitcom from, <laughs> okay, this is, yeah, okay, here's the first one. Pat juice. <laughs> <laughs> Pat juice. <laughs> <laughs> See, we gotta vote. See, you gotta vote for Butt Geek. We gotta get President Butt Geek. All right, I'm gonna have to like hit stop real quick when this opens. So yeah, you gotta have to watch that. Uh, that is I the got most it. Season one, episode <laughs> yeah. one. Demolition. Yeah. Oh, you know what? We never even got too far into talking about this uh, into life. Flash said evolution no, or. Uh, what do you say? Um, uh, extinction, yeah. Extinction or uh, evolution. Where are we going? Where are we headed? Let's 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 delve in a little bit as we go out at the, towards the top of the hour. Where are we headed as the uh, the totalness of the world here and man and all the inhabitants and where we've been and where we're going. But why would we... Okay, I I can't answer that question, really. Because that indicates that there's some quality that we need to reach, or there's some one way, or a right way, or a wrong way, and how far are we from that? Oh, man, a long way, so I think. I think I think we are evolving. And for better and worse, we are evolving. And there well, are plenty certainly. of things. And uh, I, 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 I'm pretty sure that we have become, we are becoming more and more intelligent when it comes to mathematics and science and understanding and language and all that. I'm pretty sure that in that direction and creativity, innovation, we are, um, we are, uh, we're in progress. We're not declining there. 
I think we are kind of have a, a really big chance of uh, moving ahead <coughs> in uh, leaps and bounds. Yes. But we we uh, we are opposed by well, John there, Kennedy. Said. There are, yeah. Well, there are two um, two sides to uh, theories of evolution, or whatever. How are you going to say it, right? But there are some people who believe that evolution is a slow process that happens uh, smoothly, right? Slowly over many generations. And then there is the theory that evolution also or mainly happens in big leaps. You know, that you have a lot of period of nothing happening and then something triggers a big uh, leap in some direction. Yeah. So there is this thing about the spontaneous evolution where all of a sudden something threatens you or something changes or something comes or uh, and and the evolution kicks forward in a big step, in a big leap. The hopeful monster, as it's called. Mm. But but uh, you opened yeah. the question of yes. are we declining or are we... Um, uh, well, <clears throat> kind, of, you, kind of both. Really, I see it. Um, we have a chance, but will it happen or not? There's a big chance. This yeah. is a this is a monumental time in history. I I do believe where uh, man mankind has the uh, chance and opportunity to choose to be free. Um, mm. Whether that uh, will come in in enough numbers to uh, to overcome the the occupation that that holds us with our head underwater. Gasping mm -hmm. bubbles. I I think humans, or, or when we look back, at least, right? Um, we tend to get really involved with something, and then after a certain period, uh, a counter thing comes that would change everything and balances out, right? Yeah, there's a lot of points through history. Um, well, we did that. Right? And, yeah, you know the yeah. the gladiator or the what was the guy yeah. Spartacus and all that. Rise so, up. It, whether it be so history it, or fable or fame, uh, that uh, um, changes do come. Sometimes they're good and sometimes they're bad. But I, but I, see, I see a striving forward for reaching for uh, for freedom. From yeah, but I think that maybe um, after a long period of all this digital world and virtual world and all that uh, that that we're really into right now, where we're almost not out in the real world, right? Right. People are watching movies about trees instead of going out to be with trees. Um, and I think as a counter to that, it's, it's something that's going to pull us in the completely different direction at some point, because people are going to get fed up with that. Let's see, do I have this? Uh, I have to refresh it. That, uh, <coughs> that author, did, uh, the science fiction guy, Grimner, called them the... Uh, the Rodney Danger field of sci-fi. Let's see. Um, I have to go back a ways to catch him. Man, I listened to all them songs since then. No, I must have missed it. What was it, Grimner? What's his name? I was pretty sure I had this open, or maybe I just didn't see it and passed it by. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Harlan uh, Ellison. There was uh, that and another. Yes, the the Reaper Man. That was pretty good. It's talking about the butter or the uh, Mayflies' perspective of the great trout and the rings in the water that expand and where they go to this great place of. Uh, and then they don't even know because Mayflies, I guess, don't eat. So it's all a matter of uh, of perspective in the uh, the ponder gander, you know, a way of wandering through this life, and so. We search not where we can oppose one another, but where we can come together in in accord and agreement and uh, a sense of uh, knowing fair play. Mm. Uh, and that's uh, that's sometimes where the uh, opus uh, the there's the opposition that uh, that is completely not that right. Mm -hmm. Wants to keep us into this uh, terrible system of uh, death and destruction. So we. Yeah. But see, I'm, I, again, I'm going to be counting on um, the counter movement, right? Mm hmm. 
Um, in Denmark, we have a saying where we say, "If you um, let me see if I can translate this. If you if you tighten the the noose, you're gonna kill the baby, right? You're gonna kill the child." Um, you and that really them, means keeping them on a leash, like keeping them too close, trying to hold them back, and so yeah. forth. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, and that that really that really means that at some point, if you're gonna keep human beings uh, constrained or um, limited or in austerity or some of that, uh, you're gonna kill the baby, and and people are gonna not and gonna not want that. At some point, they can live with it for so far, but at some point, um, the child grows. Know, life, the child life grows to a point that you can't hold, continue to hold. Yeah. Because child. that's really the thing of it, right? Yeah. Um, two points in, on, in in this, right? Is the first of all the understanding of power. What is power, and and uh, what is what is the discourse of power, and, and what, how does power really work? And once you start looking into power, you realize one, you know, like really, whoa, thing, which is that the submissive part is the one who holds all the power. Hmm. And, and, and that is the truth of power. That's the true nature of power, that only the submissive one has the power of choice in the relationship. The dominant one is constantly relying and depending on the submissive one to submit. Yeah. So the only one who has power in that relationship, when you look at it as of who can control the situation, is the submissive one. That makes good sense. So that's one part about um, power, right? It's very cool. Good way to look at it. But that's the only way, that is what power's nature is, is that whoever, it's about the choice. And, but of course there's going to be consequences, because the, the, the dominating part has the choice of of killing you, or beating you, or kidnapping you, or or using force, or all that. But but you really always, the submissive part has the, the, the power of choice, because that's a consequence. That doesn't mean you don't have the choice. Uh, um, yeah, you, you see, you see how consequences and choices are separated. They're uh, separated actions. Yeah, absolutely. You have your action, okay. and there might there is some reaction to it, but you always have the action of saying, "No, I'm I'm not going to do this," or "No, I'm I'm not going to submit to you anymore." And then you bring on the the force or the violence, you know, depending on what kind of nasty dominance you're up against. And in that state is probably the most nasty dominant you can be up against. And they and will even... Then, then there's those uh, where you get to uh, incorporate into um, willfully, right? What's the difference between the, uh, you know, the, the slave and the servant? Well, because the dominant one has no choice in this. Because um, he... See, I say I understand. How how do you have? Because it makes when you just look at it, you go, no, no, no. The dominant has the power. Yeah, that's what people and that's what the discourse wants you to understand. But once you start looking at it and you start looking at it from choices, the dominant has no choice if he wants to um, stay in that power discourse. The dominant can choose to leave it. But then he's got no dominance, then that's it. He is, yeah. if he wants to be dominant, if you want to be dominant, you are in that being relying on someone to submit to it. Right. So you are completely depending your power. If that's how you get your power is from other people submitting it to you, then you are completely relying and depending on other people giving it to you. And you do not give your way your power once. No, you you are constantly harvesting. You're constantly being power. What about so you have to, to you have to you have to submit to it every second, every moment of your life? Because you can always, at any point, you have to you you just have the choice of saying, "I'm not going to give you my power no more." But you can choose also not as a 
being uh, dominant or submissive, you can choose to uh, um, give to another, like say in marriage, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And go in as uh, equals. Yeah, then you, but then you you make a third one, you make a, a third hole, or <laughs> yeah, you complementary in some way, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So did you get that anti? Everything is not about power, but when you enter power, when you're into the power, and you start looking at it, then you will see that they flip-flopped it around for you. They made it look like you have no choice. So everything you are being taught about power is that, that when you're submissive, when you're a slave, when you're under control, when you're, um, you have no power. That's, that's the lie that makes the dominance work. But it's a lie. But it's the lie that, and dominant people, you know, the dominant. Those are, those are, uh, are you, are you kind of confining this to, uh, personal relationships or, or past in? Whatever. Uh, whatever relationships there is. Yeah, you always see yes, No matter how big, no matter how big the power is. You always have the choice of not obeying, of not submitting to it, and then there comes a reaction that just, you know, m very well be death, right? That's a big... Um, Comply or die from the dominant one, in other words. Exactly. You know. They can use all that. There is all that force and power, but but you still have the choice. You have that, the choice. You have, so you have every, everything can get you out of this. You have the choice to kill yourself. You, yeah. There's all there's that. So you're saying we have the the, the choice from uh, every aspect of uh, our relationships. Yes. Do or don't, right? Yeah. And if you uh, so uh, anti was was trying to get the distinction here from uh, who has the power that who's the one that that gets to choose. The which which that, comes? Uh, yeah, the one that chooses to submit to. Uh, yeah, you choose to submit, and you have to keep choosing the submission, right? But that's not uh, always a bad thing either. You choose to submit. No, no, there right. are plenty of beautiful of of beautiful relationships, and and we we do that with people we like in a good way all the time. Yeah. We submit to each other, and then I submit to you, and you submit to me, and yes. and we. And we let other people give us stuff, and that's a submission too. To a, uh, how would you call it? A, another power, did you say, or uh, a third power, or a third party, in a sense? The so when you take when you take two, um, you know, when you merge two things together, they become a third, right? Uh huh. Right. Not the same. If you, as they if were you merge before. them, uh -huh. no. Very good. Yeah like it but see then because we were talking about the um privilege thing right on chat the other day or i was because i was making pancakes and you um you got me to thinking about the the privilege things and what are privileges and and i'm gonna define a privilege as uh how many choices are given or offered to you and, and the key words here are offered or given to you. So how many choices does the world, society, people around you offer and give you? That would be um, my definition of how privileged are you. Yeah, a lot of times it's a black and white or yes or a no or this side or the other. Uh, people demand uh, that definition from you. And it's not always the two sided. It's uh it's uh you know, I don't think you can define it as something that superficial as the color of your skin or or um or the not even the class you are in the society or where you are and all that shit. I don't think you can use all those um purely social economic uh um variables to explain it, right? You're right. Hey, we've uh, we paused there for a little while, but uh, coming up on about an hour, so I'm going to round her out and uh, okay. close out from Dave. Hey, I appreciate you coming on. I'm uh, <clears throat> still looking for um, my radio voice coming back here. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully next week it will be. I'll probably look to be uh, jumping over here and throwing a chain around uh, Flash to Mark. I see Grammy, she's uh, 
She's mm -hmm. broke, broke loose, Dark. so I probably have to come over here. <coughs> I'd uh, not cough some. Wait, I had a cough. <laughs> No, no, keep coughing. It's, it's, it's <coughs> oh, there it from was. smoking. No, it was so, it's, it's like a little stuff left over coming up, right? Uh. In the way. Get out of the way. That's why, yeah, it was either smoke or talk. Mm. Right? Amen. I'm, I'm just telling in you, Vinny. The, the, the more you cough, the, the lungs are going to get um, scratched and itched and full of scar tissue. And it's not good for the lungs to cough. So you want to keep it down. And your lungs produce more and more slime to keep up with the damage you do when you're coughing. Yeah, well, so that's why you keep... Trying to clear, so, clear them, uh, clear, clean the hairs off in there. Just do a two-minute uh, meditation and get back to your breath, <laughs> and you will go away. <laughs> hey, thanks. Thanks, yes. Circle. Have a good one. All right. And happy birthday, you. Moose. Yes, happy birthday. Friday the 13th, the full moon. Friday. Freaker's ball. Freaker's Friday. Ah, oh, I should, should stop. Stop. <laughs>